Hi hey guys, it's John. Welcome back to the farm. We have not showed the donkeys in a while. They are in the midst of blowing their coats. Looks like Leroy has pretty much got his blown fully. He's looking good. Just fed him a little hay this afternoon. We're getting ready to move them out into a pasture. Let them do a little bit of grazing. Um, this spot has obviously grown up. I want to get in here, mow it down. We'll probably just move them over here into this pasture. So we'll work on doing that a little bit today after they eat but we do have one of the hardest jobs on our farm to do. And it is right over here with Jamie. She is in with Margie's litter. Let's go see what that job is. All right guys, over here with the piglets, looks like Delilah and her litter are going in to get out of the sun for a little bit. She was just napping in her wallow. Here is Margie's and this is the hardest job on the farm. So we have a couple deposits on a few pigs but the hard part is getting pictures, pictures. getting quality, yes, and pictures are easy. Getting quality pictures to the customers waiting and we know how it is. We were new with pigs just a couple years ago. You are wanting pictures and videos and you're just so excited. But to get a quality picture of these little pigs is easily the hardest job on the farm. So we're gonna set this down for a minute and we are going to try to get some quality pictures sent to a couple people waiting and uh then we're going to talk about kind of we don't register all of these pigs um any good breeder is not going to register all of them because they're not all registrable um we're still learning about things so we're not perfectionists or we're not perfect at it i should say but we're going to kind of show you some things we look for when we're picking out which pigs will be registrable All right, so as you can see there, take about 400 pictures just to get four decent ones that we can send to people. Um, it is not the easiest job on the farm. So like I said before, we are not... Um, we're not perfect when we Yeah, do we're it. not the go-to. Uh, we don't have all the answers. We still talk to some breeders that we've worked with um, when we're trying to figure out, you know, is this pig good enough to be registrable? We've had people saying, well, you've got so many pigs how come we don't have one available for us? And I have to let them know, well, we don't register every single pig. Um, so the ones that don't go registered go into a meat herd, which is fine because we're starting to get uh, a lot of, what's the word? A lot of uh, interest, yeah, yeah, interest in the Cooney Cooney pork, which is a good thing. Um, so what we tend to look for, um, I was gonna show you on this litter, um, but you can see they're, uh, kind of just enjoying the afternoon nap. But it's easy when you're, it's a little easier, I should say, when you're comparing them to the rest of the litter, because some of these grow and just are big, stocky, like this this orange one. Is that the other one right next to them? Yeah, these two yeah. are a prime example of what we look for. Yeah, here big. we here we go. This guy's just so getting up. You can see he's got like no snout. <laughs> I'm gonna turn his butt towards you. Yeah. And you, well, did you see I'll that at all? I'll follow him around. Okay. He's got a wide face. When he walks, his legs don't come together. So that's what we look for. You can see he's got a nice straight back. He's not all archy or sloopy. Yeah, that's good. Um, something a lot of people will find as downfall for him is he is on waddled, but as perfect as he is, we would still register this one. 
Um, I wouldn't think twice about keeping this one because he is a chunk and he's beautiful in every other way. He's got nice perky ears, although I really like floppy ears. A lot of people don't care for the floppy ears. As long as their ears are not tightly rolled in like, there's none in here that I could even give you an example of. But floppy ears are fine. It's when they're super tightly rolled in there. You could almost just stick a finger in them and that's it. That you really don't want. I can get infection um, in there. And yeah. it's just not a great trait. But it's, I mean, we don't mind a floppy eared pig. Some people don't like them. Like, it's kind of like the Ford Chevy thing. Everyone's got what they like um, and don't like. But there's some obvious things, like she was saying. Sometimes they'll be knock kneed, their legs are really close. One breeder was talking to us. I mean, I know this is not a good example with all these pigs laying down. You can't really see a whole lot. But um, one breeder was telling us you look like for a table and you want your legs at the corners of the table. Uh, the nice straight back. A lot of people put huge emphasis on waddles. If you don't know what a waddle is, see if we can find this one is unwaddled. Here's a waddle. Here's a waddle right here. This is that little dangly piece of skin that hangs down off the pig. Um, their cooney coonies have waddles. Well, he would be a perfect example of having everything that we would want. He doesn't have curled ears or floppy ears. He's got two well attached, perfectly straight down waddles. He's got a nice short snout. He's got a nice straight back, and he's got a wide set of hams. Yeah. So, so, and a lot of times it's hard too when you if you don't spend a lot of time out here and you see them eating or you see them walking around, they're kind of hunched or. So you just got to spend some time and when they're eating, their heads are down and it looks like a lot of them have hunched backs, but they really don't. So you need to spend the time out here with them and just keep watching and seeing how they're forming. We normally don't look for that until they're about five weeks old. Some of them take a little bit longer, um, but five weeks old is usually when we start checking and making sure. Um, you also kind of want them up on their toes a little bit. Um, we have heard that pastured pigs are down on their feet a little farther than pigs that you're raising on the cement, but uh, some you can tell. We don't have any good examples of bad feet in this litter. Um, a lot of our bad feet pigs go into our meat herd, so. We do have a good example of both back legs. All right, here's one. This one will not be registered. This is the little boy, if you saw Chloe's birthing video. This is the little guy that was stuck in there, and that's not why he doesn't isn't a good example, but this is this little piglet who's just, he's fine, he's growing and thriving, but he's- And he's starting to fill out more, but he's been really thin the whole time. <laughs> and if, if Chuck can sneak around back of him, you can kind of see his legs are pretty close. Well, of course, there we go. There you go, you see how his back legs are really close together, and some of that's just the way he's standing right like there. Like he goes in like a V. Yeah. We want more of a straight, and all the pigs, I don't care what anybody says, I feel like they all go in a tiny bit, yeah. but not not as drastic. Yeah, and he's quite thin. He's just not growing like the rest of them. Nothing's wrong with him, but we just wouldn't use him as a breeder. I wish they were side by side. This is the big chunk that we were just showing here. Um, maybe he'll come over here. Here he comes. <laughs> come here, bud. Well, here you go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that ginger one is that other big one. He doesn't have waddles, but we'd, we're still going to keep him. Yeah, if you can span on the top, there's a big difference. Yeah, if you're looking down from the top, you can see this guy's quite thin, where this guy's a big chunk. So those are just a couple things we look for. Um, some people may look for different things. Um, and um, like I said, we're not perfect. We're not the go-to for exactly what you should look for. But we did want to share a couple things that we do look for when we're looking for a pig that's going to be registrable. So those are a few things. Um, the whole waddle thing, a lot of people put emphasis on the waddles. We have, uh, what do we have unwaddled? Millie. Millie is unwaddled. No, all her waddled. piglets have produced waddled pigs. I'm sorry, all her litters have produced waddled pigs. So the waddle thing, I mean, I don't know if there's a purpose of them. I guess if you're showing the pigs in a show, they might be looking for waddles. We don't show our pigs. Um, but just because they don't have waddles doesn't mean, hey, that their piglets can't produce waddles. So we hope that helps. Um, we hope we covered everything. We've had a lot of questions on what we look for. So hopefully that answers some of those questions. What do you got? And you can see how his tail goes 
down quite a bit compared to, well, yeah. <laughs> depending if you can see it in the camera or not. Yeah, that's another thing. We look for a higher tail set that's, <laughs> this is just about like trying to take pictures of pigs. You're not really, it's kind of hard. So a high tail set up on their back is something else we'll look for as well. So anyway, let's go get this uh, chicken area ready. We've got a lot of uh, processing coming up here in the next week or two. Well, obviously something's wrong with the mower. Seems like every time you start something, something goes wrong, but just kidding. That's a bad attitude. Um, Uncle Ken, you need to come down and fix it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I think it just needs some oil. I haven't checked the oil in a long time, but anyway, we've got this area mowed. Um, we've got a batch of 150, so I'll probably do about 30 a day until we are finished. So I've got, what's that, five days of butchering. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start over on this side and then I'm just gonna move my butcher area down. I don't like to butcher in the same spot twice just because it's a lot of water, a lot of yuck, and after a while that starts to stink. So we just spread it out along this area, kind of just like moving the chickens. We're fertilizing this area while we're processing. So the last couple times I processed, you can kind of see I was up in here. A lot of it's just all the water underneath my processing table that just gets matted down and I'm walking on it all day. So we're gonna move our equipment over here and we'll be set up for the morning. Alright, so that's it for today. The kids and I will get the birds tonight, go down and get them with the blue tub, bring them back up, and we'll put about 30 in there. These are the old chicken tractors we used to run our meat birds in, and uh, they are working great, and they work great for uh, housing these birds to process. We don't have to put them in the little crates, put water in there with them, and uh, they are good overnight. So a lot of people will keep feed off them for 24 hours. I think that's a little long. We're getting ready to feed right now. That will be their last feed tonight at dusk. We'll go out and collect them and put them in here. And all that feed will be out of their crop by the time the morning comes. So in the morning, all I got to do is come out, set up my tent, processing table, plucker, and get the scalder going. So it saves us a lot of time and I can get off to an early start tomorrow. So anyway, that's another fun job. Just wanted to say thank you guys. The last video we talked about Cal and his injury and just you guys reaching out and wishing him good luck and the prayers and stuff, that has been pretty awesome. So obviously you guys kind of know a lot what's going on around here. We don't know a lot about you guys, but just your well wishes and your prayers are greatly appreciated. He is doing well. Why don't we go over and give you an update on Cal before we wrap this up. All right, guys. Here is Cal, <laughs> and he's right back to his, hey, can you sit, sit, there you go. He is right back almost to his old self, so pretty gnarly looking. Like I said in the last video when it happened, it looks, the worst part was they kind of shaved him, so he looks uh, quite creepy, but he's adjusting well. He's still learning this cone and uh, banging it on things, but his wound is starting to heal up. Um, we do take this cone off every night. We're getting ready to feed and he will get fed too here once we feed the animals, but it, it gets dirty in there and it's kind of stinky. Um, so we like to keep that cleaned up. So I know you can't help it, but you kind of stink, bud, don't you? Yes, you do. <laughs> well, man, he's doing awesome, man. Like I said, we appreciate all your prayers and get well wishes i know some people say oh he's just a dog but he's not man he's our dog we love him um he still does sneak up under the porch and this is where he always used to go went to cool down under there but we'll see him towards the edge and his cone gets stuck so we got to push his cone down so he can come fully out but cal you doing all right 
You doing all right? Yes, he's doing all right. He has not been following me the whole way on chores, but he'll come a little way, wait in the shade for me, and uh, then wait till I come back up. But he's doing good. He's trying to itch it. I'm sure it's quite an itchy uh, thing as that thing heals up. When I had surgery on my knee, it was itchy as my skin was healing it back up and everything. So I'm sure he's going through the same thing, but he can get his drinks and uh, he gets he gets his food. He can put his face flat down on the ground. He's figured out how to get his food, but he's doing great, guys. And uh, we appreciate you guys. Um, if you haven't already, check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Don't forget to make the change. Come on, bud. Nobody wants to see you.